uh, Mr. Anas, that have been massive layoffs also happens in India this year. Since last June, thousands of workers on tech industry, including India's unicorn, have been left off. So how could it happen? So uh, I think uh, whatever I've understood from Mr. Pandu, uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, what happened during India. India is a big country, right? So a lot of people and a lot of these trade and market transactions happened offline. Uh, but during pandemic, uh, there was a sudden shift in the whole uh, buying uh, buying criteria in the sense that the, the buying process, the whole huge surge of demand happened in terms of people coming into online, right? So because of which a lot, lot of massive hiring that was done by tech sector and the tech companies in India during the pandemic. And uh, somewhere down the line, I think one of the uh, underlying assumptions that I think that could have been an oversight uh, during pandemic was that you know, uh, some of his investors and companies thought this growth and this change in uh, uh, change in character or uh, would possibly stay on forever. Uh, but as you can see, once the pandemic kind of got over, uh, people are more than uh, aggressively getting out in the public, open, making transactions, all that. So, so if you look at the whole thing, there was a, a definitive mismatch in terms of what happened during pandemic and what the reality now is. Uh, so there was, of course, excess of hiring during pandemic and which could possibly solve some of the layoffs now. And secondly, uh, it is also, uh, like Mr. Pandu said, right, it, it's investment till possibly 2021 when the valuation was at all-time high. At least from an Indian perspective, it's about going after growth at all costs. Now, you need to have growth and profit is like a, uh, like a pursuit of happiness. You will not really get profit, but you have a pursuit for profit. Uh, but then growth at all costs has always been the uh, uh, the whole thing. And all the money, cash burn, all that stuff was for growth. And uh, you have to hire people. And of course, how do you grow? You have to build tech system, sales, marketing. The, the whole ecosystem was built around growth. Uh, but what happened after uh, 2021, you know, uh, come some of the IPOs that uh, happened in India, uh, some of the major, most uh, famous companies like Paytm, Zomato, some of these IPOs happened, uh, big ticket IPOs happened in India, and the results were not all that great, uh, which kind of uh, brought in the realization that expectation from a retail investor perspective versus a private investor, is, there's been a significant gap. All these IPOs could not perfume, uh, perform at 50% uh, below the IPO price at this, at this current level. So that so that expectation mismatch is also there, which led to, which is leading to a big question on profitability. Nowadays, now I'm an active investor in startup as well. We have raising a, we have a small fund as well. Uh, till now, till last year, the whole question was mainly on what are the growth, what was the growth potential and everything. But now we've started asking what the profit margins are, what are the net margin of a business is. So um, uh, these are the multiple factors that I think it is. And basically, one is, of course, to uh, realign on what the uh, pandemic expectation versus the post-pandemic expectation is. And secondly, to understand that uh, it's not only about growth, but also to maintain sustainable profits. And for a tech startup, the most, uh, the, possibly the biggest expense is basically the people, right? You cannot fire computers and servers. You can just ask uh, people to be laid off and that's how we save expense. So I think the obvious uh, uh, target is the uh, startup, the alignment of the workforce. So this is the, some of the, uh, reasons that I think the uh, reasons for layoffs are. Okay, Mr. Anas, uh, next question. Is this massive layoffs phenomenon happens because of uh, mismanagement or maybe more because of startup ecosystem that already fed up right now? <laughs> I, I don't I don't think it's uh, mismanagement, of course. you know. I think uh, that's my perspe perspective. I think it's uh, we possibly have uh, the, let's say we put out the unicorn list in India. Now you have about top 100, about 100 unicorns in India. And uh, that's about, let's say, 200 to 300 founders. And so if you look at the percentage of these founders versus the rest of the population of the country, we probably see these are one of the smartest people in the country. And the boards of these founders of these companies have uh, some of the best investors and leaders on the boards, right? Um, so. But there are, of course, uh, assumptions and business decisions that are being made based on the status, uh, the, the status quo at that point in 
time and it could definitely evolve right uh, so i don't really think it's mismanaging of course we had big hits like covid happened between a 2021 valuation aberration when there was excess liquidity in in the market now all of a sudden the liquidity is dried up because of inflation and high cost of capital so all that has an impact on the overall uh, the funding cycle and uh, what the valuations are so the uh, when there is a uh, when there is a liquidity dry up in the market, what do founders look for? You know, how can we raise funds by improving possibly profitability? So I don't really think it's mismanagement. It's about recalibrating the valuation assumptions and future expectations in terms of what you would look from a startup. I think that's what it is. How do you see Indonesia and India's startup industry prospect in the future? Is it still promising? And what are the strategies need to be done to survive in this winter funding? Is that massive layoffs? Uh, is this the only way of efficiency? Uh, I think uh, I think you, uh, you may have to look at what happened during dot com bubble. You know, uh, when during dot com bubble, uh, I think Amazon's valuation was almost down by ninety percent, if I'm not wrong, right? And uh, and you know where Amazon is now. Uh, so I think one uh, important factor that uh, any startup that might have to think about now is to basically focus on cost. Right? That's very, very important. Uh, cost levers and having a control on cost levers to survive the next 18 to 24 months is possibly the most important uh, thing that has to be done. Um, because uh, this is a cycle, right? You know, this funding winter is not going to be continued for the rest of a next 100 years. After two to three years, it's going to come back and the uh, growth will be valued more as well. Uh, that, that's that's one very important thing to understand. So we should not lose hope, focus on uh, uh, the cost cutting and hire the right people. Don't uh, make sure that you focus on your core business model, uh, try to bring efficiencies, make sure your customers are aligned, you know, all those kind of points. Uh, so so it's a cycle. We just need to survive the whole cycle. That's number one. Regarding the future of, from an Indian context, you know, we've been uh, putting on the Huron uh, Rich List uh, and uh, the startup and the future unicorn list for a while. Uh, just to give you some bit of perspective, India's GDP is currently about three trillion dollars, uh, right? And uh, many estimate that we'll double our GDP in uh, in possibly. Uh, next uh, ne by the end of the decade, which will be six to seven trillion. Uh, when we put out our first Horan India rich list in 2012, uh, we had absolutely no startup founders in the list, right? And fast forward, uh, the current Horan India rich list has about uh, 112 founders of startups in the list. So what I'm trying to tell you, tell you here is uh, the growth in GDP for India in the next decade is going to be driven by a lot of new billion dollar or super valuable businesses coming from India. And the super valuable businesses, most of it would, I, I would like to believe that a good proportion of that would come from the startup ecosystem, but which would mean that there'd be a lot, of, lot more startup wealth creators. And when more startup wealth creation happens, there'll be a, a circle of life sort of thing where these guys will start investing back into new startups and so on. So I think it's, very bright from an Indian context, where in terms of the growth is going to be, uh, there'll be new you know, untapped sectors like uh, EV, uh, sustainability, agrotech. All these uh, sectors are going to gain a lot of prominence in the next uh, next few years. Uh, so to summarize, I think this is just a temporary funding winter. Uh, one has to focus okay. on the cost and continue to look at it. And the startup okay. future in India is really bad. So anybody who is watching this channel, come and invest in India. It's oh. a great place to invest.